The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for the Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Now, my pleasure to be here Monday through Friday, 11 o'clock till noon Eastern Time at 877-927-6648. That's the number to call. Thank you, Steve, for two great hours. We are programming right through the day today. Full House Tuesday. Straight after me is the Options Hour with Chad Coco. You've got uh, Daryl Martin. You've got Dave White. You've got Andy Hecht. You've got... Well, I'll be there for Tom O'Brien at 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock. My pleasure to be filling in for the Honorable Tom O'Brien. So uh, let's go straight to the market. We've got the Dow down um, 11 at 17,044. S&P's down 5.55 at 1971. Comp index is down 28 at 44.11. And what else do we have? We have gold. Gold is uh, the... Uh, GLD is down uh, one at one twenty four and sixty six thirty. Uh, yep, sixty six. Uh, gold itself is uh, down almost ten at twelve ninety seven. Silver is down thirteen cents at twenty point eighty. High grade copper is uh, up just a fraction. It's at three point two six seven. Bonds down eleven thirty seconds. This is uh, got Janet Yellen speaking. Uh, yellow, no specific Fed tools to target long-term unemployment. Interesting. And uh, what else do we have? We have the dollar is up 15 cents at 80.34. And we'll go straight to the market because this is a very important session as far as I'm concerned. Let me explain why. In the charts that we're looking at here, um, let, me just, let me just finish this here. Yeah, in the charts that we are looking at, we're looking at the E mini. This is the ESU 14. That's the September E mini. And it made a peak D in the Chapman Wave methodology um, in 1978.25. And there was a downtrend line. And that downtrend line is a pattern that I call the falling X, where it looks like a declining cone with. Um, Highs, that with lower highs and much lower lows. The lower lows went right down to the up channel support. That's the red and green lines right there. We went to 1945.25 and rallied strongly. It hasn't been able to push and close. It did go momentarily into the 1976.25 area. Hasn't been able to hold it. It's down five at 1966. This is an important moment here because if it arches over and the uh, e mini starts to take out the 1960 support level going to the 1950s, you're looking at this being an arch or lowercase h failure pattern, potential failure pattern. I mentioned to my subscribers, I show this chart every day. Uh, the left side is the daily. In this particular instance, the right side is the 120-minute chart. Now, look at this beautiful pattern that it formed. I'm just going to expand it. Look, it's like a very big bowl formation. And it says that at any point uh, this week or early next week, if, if the E-minis are able to spike above the 1978.25 um, all-time high, and punch right into the 1980s, that'll be this bowl formation breakout. That, that would be very positive. I'm thinking here that it's going to be a lot of resistance. And look at this. you got a little cup formation, left side, right side, price time master, that PD at 1974, round number high. Pulls back, and not, not bad, just pulls back to 1967, 1966. And then the E-mini is popped today to 1976.25, and they make a low just a, an hour ago or so. Less than an hour ago at 1962.25. So far, that's the low of the day. What we're looking at now is we've set in place a rectangle formation that says very clearly <clears throat> this is what the, the, the parameters have broadened since earlier in the day where 1967.25 was the low. Now we've gone to a lower low. So we've expanded this and we can trade in the, in the confines of this unless. A little later on the day, there's a move to 1965 or lower in the E-minis. That will say, oh, be careful, you're going to test the low. If you take out the low, 
1958.80, well, it's the future, so let's go to 1958.75, will be the 200-period moving average uh, major support. On the upside, <clears throat> if later in the day, because we keep seeing buying coming in these days, if later in the day, that 1976.25 is taken out decisively, then there's a good chance that we've established, at least in the very near term, a very key support between 1967 and 1970. 1970 is the nine-period exponential moving average. Now, let's take this away, and let me show you some other, other aspects that I want you to go through. I mentioned to my subscribers this morning that we're going to be watching the IYT, <clears throat> the Transportation Index, very closely. I had an alternate wave count. I won't get into that right now. Uh, suffice to say, uh, suffice to say that we've got an alternate count that says either way it's D or E at this particular point. But if the MACD, you see the way this moving average convergence divergence, this technical tool, is starting to turn up, if it in fact crosses positively and it becomes the green line shoots above the red line, I call it the fast moving average, it's called the nine period differential, and the slower moving average, the red one, <clears throat> As the stochastic goes into the 82% area, that'll be very positive. And that should say that the uh, 148.06 area, it's at 149.31, up 37 cents right now. But the nine period exponential moving average could become a very strong support. I just don't know if that's going to happen by the end of the day. <clears throat> I'm watching this very closely. We have no positions. Uh, we're watching some airline and rail stocks. Let me show you something here. This is the XAL, which is the airline index. With crude oil so sharply lower, <clears throat> the, crude, the airline index should theoretically be above the peak E in the weekly, peak E in the, the daily, and <clears throat> leg F in the monthly <clears throat> to extend towards the 80, 89s. And right now it's at 86.22. So we're watching this real closely because if it starts to fail here, it'll be one to another tip off <clears throat> that the parabolic moves that we're seeing in some charts in the monthly, in a way you can't really call this parabolic because it is just so steady. You haven't had those huge, huge candles that spiral to the upside constantly. But what we've got here is a very steady move that for um, almost a year, no, no, what am I saying? For almost two years, this is 40, no, no, for almost a year, we've made every single month, we've made a higher high in the candle. The monthly candle of the ARCA airline index. This will be with that doji candle made last week, uh, last month. This will be the first time there's a chance that the 77.99 nine period exponential moving average in the monthly could be tested if there is weakness to come in the airline index. So I'm watching it real closely. If you look at some of the transportation stocks, UNP, uh, <clears throat> this is uh, Union Pacific in a trading band, hasn't been able to uh, get back to the 102.96 peak F top in the in the week in the daily peak E in the, in the weekly, and leg E in the monthly. Also, this one is more parabolic looking, but it's still not parabolic um, in the monthly chart. Very interesting. So we'll be watching this closely. CSX, I believe, comes out with earnings this afternoon. It's trading at 31, down 3 cents. Uh, CSX core, it's the rails, um, <clears throat> made a high at peak D at 31.22 on the 3rd of July. Today's high thirty one twenty two double top so far. Let's see what the uh, the result is this afternoon. Uh, Yellen says timing a first rate hike depends on dual mandate progress. All right, good, good. As long as she has a plan. Um, <clears throat> okay. Now the other thing we want to look at is the VIX index. We've made a big deal of you know that for years now, not just recently, but years. We've been looking at the VIX and talking about it. Now it's in the in the in the Below the teens is 11.87. Try to spike today. Had a high of 12. Point, um, I think it was 12.33. Now it's trading at 11.87. Had a low of 11.46. 
the close today on the VIX is going to be important because if it closes towards the 1220, 1230 area, that's saying, aha, now I'm holding quite nicely. Even though new highs in the Dow, et cetera, I'm holding quite nicely and I'm moving higher. I'm making a, a higher highs and higher lows. So we watch this closely. A close in the 1120 area says, oh, boy, more buying coming in. Um, so question in the den about Facebook. What do you think of option on earnings day? I don't remember when the earnings day is. Um, <clears throat> Facebook right now is trading at 6706. It's got this resistance. Same thing that I've been looking at in the other charts. There's a trend line resistance. Facebook has to get to 6834 uh, to be uh, 68. 45 to really start a little bit of a breakout. Start an egg, see in the weekly, and that says you could get the U pattern that can go higher. Um, 120 minute chart, 120 minute chart just made a peak D, and it's just taking a breather after that. And uh, 66.97 is right on the uh, nine period expansion moving average. That's supported this particular point. If it goes much lower, that'll become resistance. So Facebook is looking, is looking quite good. Technically, but if it breaks under 65, it says, no, no, this is a false break to the upside. Be careful because I'm probably going to test the 63, 62 area. And it needs to decisively break into the 69s to say, uh-oh, don't mess with me. I'm going for my leg D in the monthly chart now rather than later. And I'm going to try for 72, 60, and that will be leg D in the monthly chart. And uh, leg C in the weekly starts at 68.45. So what, what are all these legs that I'm talking about? Let me show you something. In my CD introducing the Chapman Wave methodology, we're about to go to a break in a few, in a, in a few moments. I'm just going to show you something. A number of cartoons that I drew um, years and years ago. Um, <clears throat> this is one of them, and I put them into, the, uh, into my CD book called Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology. This is one that says, uh, these two guys, and one says, the stock market is like a finely tuned orchestra, all these sections rotating. Then together, they build to a huge final crescendo. And this other guy looks at him and says, And as usual, I'm buying when the bass drum hits its last climactic chord. Um, yeah, this is the fear right now. You're at all-time highs or close to them in some cases. Do you buy now and then the rug gets pulled? Well, you've been correct in buying every single day for the last almost six years, whatever it is. So since March the uh, March, yeah, it's so March the sixth uh, for us, and the, the Dow Diamonds made the low, uh, the, the Dow itself on March sixth of two thousand and nine. So you could have bought the indexes any day, and any, even on on that April high back in two thousand was it two thousand and eleven or twelve when the market pulled back twenty two percent. When we get back, I'll talk about the peaks. I'll talk about the drops. I'm going to some stocks that. And uh, as well. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you in informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and... And stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. 
For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insider today. Being program, the art of timing the trade charts, in collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade: Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much. More. The art of timing the trade charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only seventy-nine dollars a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a thirty-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of the art of timing the trade charts today by visiting TF. NN.com. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to his subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 15 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Basil, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Condition Sales. Dow's up 10 now. S&P's down to a divergence. Yeah, we were looking at this divergence for a couple of days where strength now is in the Dow stocks, Dow type stocks. Weakness, uh, I wouldn't say weakness because it has rallied, but it's not as strong in the uh, in the S&P, and certainly the, the Qs are lagging now, and the IWM is the weakest. So uh, let's go on. We're looking at Facebook. Facebook, now, what, what do I require? In the Chapman Wave methodology, what we do is we look for the lowest, <clears throat> most obvious low bar. That's slide 58 on my CD book called Introducing the Chapman Wave Methodology. Only available at uh, on TFNN. Uh, critical turns, and I show how you can use the MACD and the slow stochastic, uh, the 80% line, 20% line, um, how the, the deflection of this faster moving average, the nine period differential, can uh, uh, intimate to you that there's still strength or weakness or deflects. So in this particular case, it goes from the lowest low bar and it goes peak A, B, C, D. And uh, let me see, uh, that was the cartoon that we had. Yeah, so uh, D is where you can expect. It doesn't have to happen, but that's where you can expect a deeper kind of a retracement. And uh, let's get rid of this, and we'll go back to Facebook. And what do we have? We have the lowest, most identifiable low by 62.21 in the 120-minute chart at 1.30 on the 8th of uh, July. It goes peak A. You remember this? This is not a peak here. You've got to wait, first of all, for a trough to be formed. That is, you have to wait for the curve, that little V-shape at the bottom, 
because you've got to get that right side to make a higher low bar. That, that low must be higher. Not the low closing low, but the low itself of the bar has to be higher to make a trough. Otherwise, it, it could be a continuation pattern of the down move. So you only can start the wave count after this bar right here. Um, after the low bar is established, in this case, the one at 130 on the 8th, now you start your legs. And that A that's there, let me make this a little bigger so that we can do this in live because we've got a lot of new listeners um, and <clears throat> people have shown some interest in the Chapman Wave. So this is a floating letter. It's an A until it makes a peak. So this is this bar here is um, on the 9th at 1.30 is 64.76, but the very next bar has a higher high bar. So that's still A, floating A, floating A, right up into that doji candle, because the very next day there's a gap down, and on the uh, 10th and 11.30, there's a lower high bar. So that makes a peak, and it doesn't take out the low bar of 62.21, so it's a peak A. The moment it takes out 65.12 by one penny, starts leg B. Very next bar gives you peak B. Then I, I drew in this dashed line. It's the Chapman Wave inside wedge, and there's a left side, right side price time match that which went to um, 3.30 on the 14th. Well, even before that, it went to peak C, and then spikes above. It goes to D, goes to a doji, two doji candles um, at 3.30 on the 14th. That makes peak D, and it's confirmed today. So here's the question. In a week's time, when Facebook's earnings come out, is it, this a good time to buy an option? And let's see, an option on earnings day. And uh, J, J, J and J and the den doesn't t say a call or a put option. It just says an option, leaving it to me. Now, what I would do is this. Right at this particular point, you know, we have the Nadex platform uh, with uh, Daryl Martin at 1 o'clock. This is a perfect opportunity to have a straddle. And that straddle would have, if there are 69 or 67 and a half call positions and 66 uh, or 66 and a half put positions, that would be perfect. Because what you would want is to say, there is, there should certainly be a lot of fluctuation in price. And you'd like to be able to play it both ways. Because I can tell you right now, if it breaks above 68.44, the weekly is improving. <clears throat> And there's a chance that all of a sudden Facebook could be going for this candle right here, the 6960 candle uh, of the 18th of March. And that would say, hey, there's even a good chance if that breaks, if it breaks out from there, that the 72.59 all-time high will be will be nicked in July by options expiration next week, um, rather than uh, sooner. Uh, options expiration is the 19th, I believe. Yeah. So, um, no, that's this week. Oh, so that's a different option you'd be trading. Yeah. So I'd be looking at this. I'd have to wait because I don't want to give you. Well, let me just. Oh, you know what? You've got the options hour coming up straight after my show. That's a great. That's a, a call. A call option. But if you're going to buy a call option, I would do it right now at 6690. Um, and if what call would you be looking at? Would you be looking at? Um, hmm, all right, that gives me a moment. I'll pull up my the options uh, and I'll, I'll look to see what, what one might make the most sense. But this is really a good question for uh, the options hour. And, uh, and you've got Chad coming up, so maybe that's what you'd like to ask him about. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization 
optimization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Harmony Gold. For more information, just click the Harmony Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, everyone, we are back. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour. My service there, TFNN, is the opening calls, my daily newsletter. Very comprehensive look at the markets. Um, we, I, I show the uh, charts of the stocks or the indexes or whatever it is that we are long or short or what we're looking at as key um, uh, measures um, every day. I give you the parameters and I also tell you what to look for. Uh, for instance, today I said if the VIX does a certain something or other and the market is at a certain point, uh, that would suggest a move to the upside or the downside or it'll continue in the direction that it's been in, etc. So when I, I show you uh, every day, I talk about the, uh, I show the Dow chart right here is the Dow chart and I explained that it had made another cup formation and that it was about to bump into resistance. There's that dashed line. This is exactly what I was talking about. Look at that. There's the resistance. See that dashed line right there that I drew in? Pop. It goes right up to it and at 17,120. And what did I say today? I said the um, parameters to watch will be, uh, let me just get this back again. 
The parameters will be um, 17, 120, um, and unless there was a big breakout to the 17,150s, that would change things. Um, so the other aspects that we were looking at is that the um, that the tr the VIX index was down to trough B, but there was an anticipation I had that it could pop. So here it is at um, 12.01. Hit 12.33 already today, but it's 13.24. That'll already be impressive. If it can get there, this market's going to start going down quite quickly. Now I have to consider this in the 120-minute chart, and I said today, if there's a pop-up and a failure, we've got to think of it more as a peak F than a new C. So we're watching this very, very closely. Um, and uh, a couple of other things. So let's go back to the Facebook. Now, looking at the options, uh, because you're looking at a call option, Jay in the Dan, I'm, I'm thinking um, that I would be waiting. My, my bias right at this moment is more towards the put side just for a quick dip. But I would not be surprised if a lot of information is given to you at Thursday's close, Friday mornings open for Facebook trading at 66.69 right now, down to dollar 21. Why? Because all it needs to do is it, it just it's going to be a little struggle, but it needs to clear 68.28, and it'll be very quickly at the 68.44 level if it can hold there for at least two 120-minute bars. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So you know what? Ask me this question. I'm looking at the, the, the calls and the puts. Um, I don't see a 3.55. Uh, that's a lot of money. I would not be paying 3.55 for an option right here on a $66.66 uh, stock. So uh, I, I needed to shrink some. Then I'm, I'm prepared to look at it. So, okay, let's go back to our story. In, within uh, the context now, let me just get rid of this. Close the exit window. There it is. So uh, within this context, what we're looking at is that peak D. Remember, peak D is where you can. doesn't have to happen, but you can expect a much deeper pullback, and it did happen from 68.44 down to the 62.21 uh, uh, 62 level on the 8th of uh, July. Nice V-shaped rebound, but this is where you want to see the MACD not deflect lower, which it kind of looks like it wants to do, but you want to see the stochastic climbing and go to 80%, and that would be a very good sign. So just on the short term, I would not be looking at the call side of Facebook. Now let's do a couple of other things. Um, so that was the volatility index. Just one more back to that because I'm not sure I completed my thought. Um, yes, so the weekly chart of the volatility index shows that they are. It shows that these swoops to the downside that became cup formations that were going back close to but not exactly to the previous left side high most of the time had uh, failures that were five to six to seven weeks and then they started a little u-turn if they didn't make a little inside swoop to the upside so that you had a u that had a little u within it now what we're looking at is something very different the pattern has changed completely and this pattern will become far more impressive if the volatility index later this week is able to climb above 13.23 was last week's high. If it closes anywhere in, at 13 or higher, especially if it closes above 13.40, that'll be the first time on a weekly basis that we've got a trend change that has gone to two higher peaks with the stochastic and the MACD at the lows so that it's possible now to get a more concerted, a longer term longer term weekly I'm talking about, uh, move to the upside. So let's now leave that alone because it's very simple. Higher prices in the VIX means selling. Uh, I don't call it fear and greed. I call it buying pressure and selling pressure. Now let's go to EWG. EWG, Germany won the World Cup and big celebration going on. Peak E in the monthly chart, EWG. Um, I always get this question. Why is this bar here? Let me make it bigger. There's another Chapman Wave question. It comes up very, very often. For people new to my methodology and are not, who are not used to the fact that you cannot start a buy signal until you've made an established low. What is an established low? You just got to get that V and then, then it's 
uh, up for grabs whether or not it's going to turn into any kind of a bicycle or drop and go to lower lows. But you can't do anything on this bar. You have to wait for the next bar, which in this case makes the makes the trough. That's October the October of 2011. The low is 16.96 on EWG. This is the iShares MSCI Germany ETF, and then that 16.96 low becomes an 18.13 low the very next month, November of 2011, 11.11. 11. And what happens? That says it's a trough. All right? Another thing is when you get these monster candles, really huge and significant, what turns out late to be significant lows, it doesn't matter that you can't start this as peak A because it isn't a peak yet. You have to wait for a trough to be formed to say, aha, now there's a turnaround. The very next peak above any of the left side highs will establish a peak. And lo and behold, there it is. Uh, March of 2012, the EWG makes a peak at 2383. Now, what's interesting, this started its move in October of 2011, before the, the, our markets made their low in March of uh, 2003. Interesting. So now, let me do this. Um, so EWG in the monthly chart, I've got some kind of a signal that says be a little bit careful here. The MACD is turning down, but still very strong. Stochastics at 93%, very strong. So really, any selling pressure has to come from, it has to come from uh, the, short, the shorter term. It doesn't have to be short term, but shorter term out of the two. Well, monthly charts are longer term. Shorter terms are shorter term. 83, 88, 80, well, okay. So here's peak A, here's peak B, here's peak C, here's peak D, and here is peak E. This is going to be very interesting. Now, the low here is 29.54, and the low there is 29.31. So what is happening here? Well, let me explain what we do in the Chapman Wave methodology. Uh, I have to go back to see if I did pick the lowest low bar. That's the most important thing. Because if you didn't pick the lowest low bar, I'm starting over again. Wave count. EWG. A. And the reason being, it's the most identifiable low bar. When, once you find that, that's very important because it says... Uh, 2376 was the high in September of 2012, 2372. So there's a technique that I use in the Chapman Wave called the uh, peak C1, peak C2, and this is what happens, C1, and here comes peak C2, slightly low. It should have gone to D, but it missed it just by a fraction. And it says you can possibly use this as a top. So now the next peak is... D slash A, E slash B, and there's a sharp decline, so you can put the down arrow, but wait a minute. From the trough that was made um, uh, November of 2012, the week of the 16th at 2049, you made a much higher low bar. So that says, you know what, you can count that as a continuation pattern, and that takes you to F slash C, and lo and behold, we do get the D right there, and that's perfect, because that D becomes a top, because you can't put a down arrow, because it's not A, B, C, D, so it has to have this, this inverted V, which is a little cap, a little carrot, and that is called um, uh, the secondary top, and there it is. So it's a brand new move, and you go peak A, B, C, D, E, F. Now let me check this out. 3193, 3191. So this is going to be so interesting. Here we go. So I'm going to put in an F right there. I'm going to put in a down arrow because everything was turning down. I'm going to put in an up a plus sign because I don't know yet whether or not this is uh, something that, that's going to be counted as a double top or not. And it goes A. It pulls back sharply. And it goes to another A right there. Now comes the test. Because we always want to get to a D. 3179, 
3179. Interesting. So this becomes a B, and that becomes C1 and C2. Another C1, C2 right there with a high of 3236 and 3238. Oh, it's a D. I love that. I love the way that works. It's amazing. Uh, I mean, I, I've done this. I, I figured out it must be half a million times. I've been doing it, what, for 30 years, peak Ds, <laughs> so on. I just, oh, man, how many charts? So there it is. You've got your peak D, so you've got to be careful. EWG, Germany, weekly charts is be real careful. We're in a trading range. This is a block that we're going to look at that goes like this. And if the uh, low of last week of uh, 31.45 is taken out, be careful because 30, uh, whoa, 29.85 is next. And 31.27 is the nine period exponential moving average resistance. So I thought I'd, reach, I'd like to go through something completely in the Chapman Wave methodology. And this peak E that was made in the, in the um, daily is what I call a rogue wave. What is a rogue wave? A rogue wave, wave is when you get your cell signal from a peak D, E, or F. Everything's working just great. MACD turns down, stochastic turns down. Every rally looks like it should fail with the MACD um, deflecting lower. And yet the price goes just momentarily to a new recovery high, just long enough intra bar to get the bears to, to cover um, the bears to cover their positions and the um, Bulls to say, oh, I knew I shouldn't have got out of it. I'm going to go back in. And then it sails to the downside very quickly in this case. Look what happened. It went from 32, 38 down to the low of three days ago of 30.40. That's, yeah, that's about a 9% move. That's, that's a big move to the downside. I'd be very careful of the EWG. I'd be careful of this market. This is a very selective market now. Yep, I know that. Uh, anyone who's missed uh, this, this move to the upside is being berated by saying, uh, oh, you, yeah, 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 you, what, well, what's going on? How come uh, you didn't recognize new highs? Well, one of the things that we're looking at is that the weekly charts have been very, very strong. But you've got to go from a daily to give you any change in the weekly charts. And this is a leg D. I said to my subscribers, we've got parameters to watch today. We're going to go, uh, we're going to get... And onto the, back onto the short side, certain factors are met. They've already, in certain cases, been met. That's good. So a question in the den about IWM. IWM is, in fact, the um, iShares. Uh, this is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, trading at 114.27. Recent high was 120.97. That was just a perfect example of a Chapman Wave left side, right side, price time match. The extended one, uh, hasn't met, been met, but the shorter term one was one, one day early, and 120.58 was the high in the IWM back on, back on, where's the date? Back on, ah, back on the 3rd of uh, March. It pulls back to 107.44, 13 points, runs up 13 points to 120.97, just a tad higher, and then it gives it back. And this is a very important moment because in this cup formation, if it breaks below 50% um, and it's beginning to look like it will, that very often says you're going back to or close to the lows. We've got to be real careful here. 111.77 is a 200 period moving average, to, uh, two and three quarter points below this. Got to be real careful. So the question in the den is, yeah, TZA, TZA on hold? No. If you're in TZA, which is 300% long, 300% uh, short, uh, yeah, I think that's fine because the moment it takes out 15.51, it starts leg C to the upside, it's trading at 15.40 and has a high today of 15.46. I think you can nibble on this. Uh, it's a little late for your best position, but yeah, I, I think if you want to uh, protect the portfolio or if you want to this as a trade, yeah, nibble right there. Uh, I'll be right back, folks. Down, down. 
you take a hands-on approach to managing your investments. And whether you're bullish or bearish on U.S. Treasuries, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. Bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Masters Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, right, folks. We're back. So the IWM is down, down 143 to 126. Has to hold the left side low in this arch, in this Pattern, got an arch, it's a pattern I call the lowercase h uh, pattern. 113.97 will be very important. Um, I was just doing some of this work on the, uh, so one, two, three, this is the QQQ series. This is a little unusual, it's gone to a, a G slash C, uh, slightly above the pr previous highs. Got to watch the Qs because if the Qs break under 94, um, just see. 
9461, th that's a real problem because that's also the nine period, um, well, 9490s, uh, nine period moving average support. But most importantly, I was looking at just a second ago, there it is, uh, crude oil, CLU. 14 just plunging since it's peak d how many peak d's have we just spoken about peak d in the weekly peak d in the peak d is the fourth highest peak it's done it f three times since the low of uh the 17th of march four times it's gone to four higher peaks and then plunged um uh, back on the 14th back on the 26th ish and back on the uh, 23rd, 25th of June. And look, here, it's almost about to touch 97.78, the um, nine period, the uh, 200 period exponential moving average. SCO, what a pity. I wanted to go along this the other day for my subscribers. I just never did it. I don't know why I didn't do it. I think it really has such a big move for leg B. I thought it had to pull back, but it hasn't pulled back for um, 24.93. Since the 30th of June, with a high of 24.93, the ultra-short pro shares uh, um, Bloomberg crude has not had a single uh, lower high bar. It's making highs uh, every single day. It's making a higher, higher, and this is a, a leg B. This is very bullish uh, for the short side of crude oil. So, and, and and as I said before, I was looking to see if uh, it's a UAL. Uh, AAL, they're not soaring today. They should be on flight uh, way up higher. Yeah, I'm watching the uh, airlines. I, I'm nervous about this market. So um, we're taking positions for that. So um, let me just uh, wrap it up because we've got about a minute to go before the end of the show. Don't forget, program all day. These are archived as well. If you want to check out my work, two weeks free, uh, go to the front page of TFNN. It's called the, um, uh, uh, My Opening Call. And that's my service, my daily service. Even more importantly, I will be doing Tom O'Brien's. I'm, I'm the guest host this afternoon at 4 o'clock. What a day to do it because this is a very significant session. And uh, let me just run through daily charts right here to show you why. IW, IWM, we just did it, uh, failing. That H pattern says if it takes out 113.97, it should go down to 111.77 very soon over the next coming days. The QQQ series has been on a tear, but this is leg D. Now it's possibly going to make a peak D. If the QQQ series goes under 94, that's not a good sign at all. It's going to have a rebound today and try to rally into Friday. The um, NYA, this is the New York Stock Exchange, NYA. And why this is the comp composite has made a PD and it hasn't been acting very well at all while the Dow is making a new uh, recovery. Look at this up channel. I'll, I'll do these this afternoon as well. I'll show you how important just a couple of trend lines can make in your analysis. We like to teach here at TFNN. You've got a great show coming up. You've got the options hour. Stay tuned and I'm going to um, just show you one thing as we're going out. Where is the volatility index now? The volatility index is at 12.27. This is very important because in the 120-minute uh, chart, it never did make a peak D above 12, uh, 13.23. So we have a chance here in the next day or two that if there is weakness, because maybe folks are getting a little bit nervous about what the Fed's going to do, is the uncertainty... Then watch that. As soon as the VIX starts to trade daily, making the 12 support and the 13s to the 14s, the new trading range, this market will be pulling back. So I'm nervous about the upside, and uh, that's just the way it is. So I'll be back uh, tomorrow, but otherwise I'll be doing concerts off the football for six time. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get 
your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. This is TFNN.